Hey guys, new year, new chances. I did a poll in my community post to see in which part of the year your breeding season starts. More than half of you starts between January and March. So the new plan of this year is to film a sort of diary. So you guys can follow me step by step how I prepare everything and condition my birds for the breeding season. And you guys can follow along. And if you like, maybe even share some updates on your birds in the description or some pictures on Instagram or Facebook. Use hashtag aviary diaries so they are easier to find. This year I want to get the community more involved into the videos. So subscribe and check my community post where I will ask you guys some questions so you get more involved. In this video I will show you how I start my breeding season. At the end I will give you some tips and show you with just the right care it doesn't have to be expensive or hard to breed these wonderful birds. As you can see, I removed most of the decorations in the cages. During the breeding season, I don't want to disturb the birds too much, but definitely want to keep it clean. So nothing on the ground, so I can clean the floor weekly. You've seen me clean my cages enough the last couple of weeks, so I did it off camera. But all the cages are ready and clean. Also the quills are ready for the breeding season. I have two couples inside and one still outside. Well, let's check out our birds. The alfinches are at the top. Most important aspect of breeding is that you have a male and a female. For some species this is easy, while for others it's a little bit harder. I don't know for sure if I have a pair. I had three alfinches last year with definitely a pair, but one died and I don't know which one. I haven't heard one of them sing their little song, but we will see. I removed one of them to see if one of them starts singing or if I can spot some mating behavior when I put him or her back in about a week. Check out my species information video to see more tips on how to spot the difference. For the starfinches I also removed the male for a couple of weeks. When you keep the sexes separated and prevent them from seeing the opposite sex, you can time your breeding a bit better and you can almost always spare the birds to the mate of your choice. And I have experienced that they are just a little bit more fired up when they have been separated for a while. Lastly, it also gives the birds some rest before they go into the breeding season, especially the females. The parrot finch is still alone, unfortunately. They are hard to come by, especially during the partial lockdown, but I will keep an eye on it. I'm also still looking for a new couple of cordon bleus, but the same story. Maybe I will add another more available addition to the bird gallery soon. Keep an eye on those community posts, maybe I will post a poll there so you guys can choose. I found a new mate for our golden finch female. I trade her son for a gorgeous little fella. I didn't separate them because after quarantine they both looked ready. I even found an egg already, so for now I want to see if she keeps laying eggs and gave them a nest box. But it's a little quick for the time they have been together, so I'm not very hopeful, but we will see. Golden finches are in breeding conditions a couple of months after their yearly molt. Most of the time they molt around the time they were born. So if you are looking for a pair, make sure they are born around the same time. A good sign is that the beak of the female will turn blacker at the tip and the male's beak will be pearly white with a bright red tip. Both these birds look in perfect conditions at the moment. Some tips to start your breeding season. For all birds it's important that the birds are not sick and of proper age. Don't start breeding the birds before they are one year old. Most finches can breed before that age but it will negatively influence your result and their health. Give them that little bit more time to get in the right breeding conditions. Light. I always try to mimic mother nature as much as possible. So because most of these species come from Australia or Indonesia and live close to the equator, the hours of light is always around 12 hours. So to breed them there needs to be at least more than 12 hours of light in the bird gallery. For European or American species the yearly light cycle is much more important 
because the increase in light triggers their biological clock. They are more used to the change in light during the year. So the light hours in my bird gallery don't change too much. Around 11 hours during the winter and from today I will slowly increase it to 13 hours. Temperature and humidity. Temperatures next. Again, these species come from areas with a warm climate. So during the breeding season, the temperature must be at least above 15 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. You can breed at a lower temperature, but you will increase the chance of egg binding. I always breed at a temperature around 20 degrees or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you look at their origin, there's not much temperature difference between the seasons. So this is not really a trigger for the birds. More important is humidity. The trigger for these birds is the raining season. With the rain comes more food, plants will grow and insects will arrive. Therefore, I will slowly increase humidity in the bird gallery. Fortunately, I live in a very wet country, so humidity is always high. But to increase this, you can also use a humidifier or just simply put up wet towels and spray the cages with water every day. Lastly, provide some bathing water for the birds. This will also help to keep the right humidity for the eggs. Food abundance and variety. When the rain comes, the food abundance increases. During winter, I feed my birds meager. I only give them some necessary seeds and grit. I will slowly add that up with a little egg food for the proteins and more different kinds of seeds like millet seeds and some germinated seeds. I just started to germinate the first bunch. Maybe I will make a separate video on how to germinate your seeds. Eventually, I will give them a little amount of mealworms. This is my own breeding setup for the mealworms, so I have mealworms all year round. Link in the description to see how I breed this. Last necessary supplements. All your birds need calcium, especially the females to lay their eggs. So already during the winter I will give them sapia. This will prevent most of the egg binding cases. I don't give them any medicine in advance. Most species will do just fine without them if they have the proper environment and the proper diet. I only sometimes give them a little vitamins in their egg food for a little boost, but I prefer giving them their vitamins by providing some fruits and vegetables. And I use apple cider vinegar as a natural medicine to prevent bacteria growth and also a natural boost to the immune system. All of these things slowly add up in a couple of weeks so the birds will hopefully get into perfect breeding conditions. So this is how we start. Hope you liked it. Click that like button and if you want to follow along, consider subscribing. That's it for now. I see you in the next diary video. And remember, stay happy and always love your birds. Bye bye.